I'm very much supportive of the feminist movement when it comes to the expanding women's options. I'm very much opposed when it comes to the feminist movement honing victimhood as a fine art. When I was in the board of directors of the National Organization for Women, we used to circulate a statistic saying that women still work 17 hours more per week inside the home. And this is true, women do. But we didn't circulate the other half of the statistic, which said that the same study, same methodology, showed that men worked 22 hours more per week outside the home than women do. And it's only when you take those two statistics and you put them together that you don't create in women the anger that says, I'm a, um, I'm a slave and he's a deadbeat. The myths that we have about men are so deep, they're so uh, embedded into our belief systems that, they, that when we confront them, they invite disbelief, they invite anger, they invite ridicule. And what I'll do is share is five basic myths the biggest myth is the myth that men earn more money than women do for the same work. In fact, that's not true. Men do earn more money than women do, but not for the same work. Full-time working men work nine hours more per week than full-time working women. They commute two hours further. They work in the most hazardous jobs in the most difficult locations. <laughs> A serious injury, mm -hmm. I suppose, once a month. So what happened here, David? Um, this is where they put the bottles in the bag. It's only when you control for the 13 most important variables that you find that women and men make approximately the same amount of money for the same work. Women actually make slightly more. Men work in the worst jobs, 24 out of the 25 worst jobs, like garbage collection, construction worker, roofer. That's why 94% of the people who are killed at work are men. Now, one of the things I was really surprised to find as I traveled to Britain is that the spending patterns in Britain and the U.S. are the same. Uh, the um, patterns of spending on health, uh, consumers, the life expectancy, the suicide patterns, all the major statistics between the sexes were virtually the same in the U.S. and in Britain. A second myth is that women are poorer and men are the wealthier ones. In fact, that's also not true. Um, among the poorest people, 85% of the street homeless are men. Among the richest 1.6%, uh, more than half of those people are women. In the middle class, among the married, married men and women basically earn the same money. The money comes to both of them equally. Power is not in who earns the money, and power is not even who spends the money, but power is on whom the money is spent. And when it comes to female versus male personal items, seven times as much money is spent by both sexes on female personal items versus male personal items. A third myth is that women are more likely to be the victims of violence. Not true. In fact, men are more likely to be the victims of violence. Three quarters of the victims of murder are men. Two thirds of the victims of violence in general, even when rape is included, are men. Men are, we often say, well, men perpetrate this violence onto the men, and therefore we give ourselves the excuse to ignore it. But we would never say, well, blacks perpetrate the violence on blacks and give ourselves the excuse to ignore that. That would be considered racist. Every culture that has survived has survived by training its men to be willing to die. Every culture has an unconscious investment in disconnecting men from their feelings. And that is where the battle was. Really bad. I've never spoke about my war experience at all. I got a grandson of 25, and he keeps our son, and I don't tell him. And why don't you talk about it? I'd say I'd done a job. 
I was called up, I'd done my job, and I was quite happy doing my job. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to forget all the experience and the tragedy that I saw during the fighting. Yes. Um, and when you begin to remember that experience, what happens for you? I get upset and that's it. Yes. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather shut that out rather than recreate right. all that pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A fourth myth is that male-dominated medical research cares more about men's health than women's health. In fact, that's not true. For example, prostate cancer, almost as many men die of prostate cancer as do women of breast cancer, and yet there's almost 700% more funding for women's breast cancer than for men's prostate cancer. Men used to die one year sooner than women in 1920. We now die seven years sooner than women. Uh, women live 50% longer than they did at the turn of the century. Men die earlier of all 15 leading causes of death. Basically, we care more about saving whales than we do about saving males. The fifth myth is the myth of the deadbeat dad. That's not true. When men and women have the same circumstances and are required to pay child support, very few people know that men are twice as likely to pay the child support as women are. I would say that the central flaw of the feminist movement was defining the world as being a world in which men oppress women, as opposed to understanding that it wasn't a world about that at all. Both sexes had roles. The women's role was raise children. Men's role was raise money. Um, but we said that women's role, that sacrifice, that slavery, we even called it. Um, but we took men's role, we called it rather male privilege, male power, dominance, sexism. I think the main thing that made me change my perspective as I saw, as I saw the women's movement move from egalitarian to non-egalitarian, that uh, women should have the right to decide whether the, they should have custody over the children. Women should have the right to join the armed services, but not the obligation. Women should have the right to take the sexual initiative, but men should have the expectation rights for women, but leaving the obligations with men. Women articulated their demands um, so effectively um, that from the male point of view, it felt like a war in which only one side had shown up. And yet, if some, somebody were to ask me who's to blame for this, I have to say that men are to blame more than women or the feminist movement because women can't hear what men haven't said, and we men haven't said anything. We put our head in the sand and hoped the bullets would miss. <laughs> You're <spending> a mouthful. <laughs>